So let's add the DB context. So I'm going to right click models and add another class to it. And I'll call this one app DB context. Now the app DB context needs to inherit from the DB context class that resides in the Microsoft Entity Framework core namespace because we are going to be using all the functionality of the Entity Framework core. So I'll make it inherit from DB context and it added the using statement for microsoft.entityframework.core. So now we need to inject the DB context inside our app DB context. So I will create a constructor and the app DB context will have the DB context options injected into it. So it's going to be DB context options and this is for our app db context and I'll simply call it options and this all comes from the actual db context class like I said that's the entity framework class so all we need to do here is to pass these options into the base class basically pass it to our db context so we will do the base and pass the options to it now this constructor is required, but we don't need to add any code here. This constructor simply serves for our dependency injection in order to inject the app DB context instances when required. So this is all we really need in our constructor. The second thing that we need is to add the DB set for our entity of employees. So after the constructor, I'll create a property and this is gonna be of type DB set for our employees. So this is going to be for the employee model and I'll call this one employees. So this DB set will allow us to access the employees because we are mapping the model to our table in the database. So we are going to be able to pull the data or insert data into the database using the DB set mapped to our employee model. And with that, we have our DB context created. We don't need anything else. We are working only with employees. So that's all we need here. So next, let's actually connect to the database. 